Welcome back to QFITS View. This video will be about working on cube spectra. We have already covered the controls for the image and spectrum parts of the display. This video will concentrate on extracting spectra from the cube. This can be done in several ways. The first way is to put the mouse on the pixel you want, do right click and select copy spectrum to new buffer. We can also extract an aperture using the circular aperture mode and then you set the number of pixels that you need and you can also extract in the same way copy spectrum to another buffer. And in a similar manner you can select the circular annular mode where you have a circular aperture and around it you have an annulus of background. So as you can see it's marked in green for the aperture and the background is marked in red. The background is subtracted from the aperture but is scaled depending on the number of pixels. For all the spectral extractions you can select either sum, the default, average or median over all the pixels. We can also get a spectrum by selecting individual pixels either as a source by pressing the S key which you see comes up in green or as a continuum by pressing the C key. You can press and hold the key and drag the mouse to select the square source, like I'm pressing the S key and then dragging the mouse. And you can see the source in green. The X key deletes individual spectral points. You can then do the standard right click copy spectrum to new buffer. You can also then remove the whole spectrum using the R key. These and other controls are shown in the status bar at the bottom of the screen. A source continuum configuration can be saved as a mask for application to another data cube. As an example, we'll set the source pixels on the nucleus of this galaxy and set continuum regions around it. We then right click and select Save Source Continuum Mask. I'll name this as cube example fits example one mask one. You save that as a standard fits file. I'll load this so you can see what it looks like. The values are plus one for the source, negative one for the continuum and zero for everything else. This can be applied to another cube. I will load the K-band image for this galaxy, the K-band cube for this galaxy. I can then right click and load source continuum mask. And do that. And as you can see, it applies the source and continuum from the other mask. The extracted spectra copy the FETS header from the cube, except for changing the Naxos and World Coordinated System keys. You can save files using the file save as fits command 
And for example, I'll make that cube example one spectrum one dot fits. And you can see it is now labeled as such in the list of buffers. Some extra controls on cubes. We can select the viewed layer pixel by entering the layer number or using the scroll bar. So here I'll enter the layer number that I want, say 450. Or I can use the scroll bar. As you can see, there is a little grey bar on the spectrum that tells you where the pixel layer is that is being viewed. There is also a play button which steps automatically through the layers. As you can see, the layer number is increasing. And then I press pause to stop it. The play speed is set in the menu Options, Cube Display, where you set the movie speed for so many milliseconds. We do say 100 and then press play. You can see it goes through a lot quicker. You can control the cube display method with this drop down list, selecting a single layer, which is the default, or the average or the median values through the whole cube. As you can see, the grey area shows you that all of the cube spectrum is being selected. We'll cover the line map option in another video. There is also a 3D view of cubes through the menu View 3D Cube. The view orientation is controlled by click and hold on the right mouse button as you can see, I can move its orientation the way I like. The mouse scroll changes the zoom. I'm scrolling at the moment. As you can see, it's scrolling in and out, zooming in and out. I'll change the color map to rainbow to make visualization of this a little easier. We can limit the wavelength range by the Z axis. In this case, I'm limiting it to 50 pixels either side of the central wavelength we have. And we can set the number of pixels here. So I can make it narrower, say 30 pixels or 100 pixels to make it wider. The slider now here sets the central wavelength as you can see, I'm going through the point at which there is a spectral line. The alpha slider sets the opacity through the layers. So as you can see, it's becoming more and more opaque and less and less opaque as I go down the alpha range. You can set a single slice for any of the axes with the slice XYZ button. So here I'll set the slice Z, and you can see we can move through this, and there's the spectral line. Clicking and holding on the left mouse button changes the brightness and contrast as before. We revert back to the standard form by the view image. That's all for this video. Check out other videos on our YouTube channel.